Hello there, welcome along to LFC TV's Premier League review show here on YouTube. Now, if you are enjoying the content, do make sure to subscribe for even more of us. Neil Miller, as ever, is alongside me this week, reflecting this week on Liverpool's 2-1 win over Brighton, which, of course, has seen the Reds return to the top of the Premier League. We're going to start by going through the goals. Obviously, Roberto De Zerbi's men make their mark very early on in the game. Danny Welbeck's opener coming just 80 seven seconds on the clock and not the start that anyone was expecting. No, it wasn't a little bit of a surprise. It was actually the quickest goal and visiting team has scored at Anfield in the Premier League since Harry Kane scored after 47 seconds. That was back in October 2019. You know what happened that year? I do know what happened. We won the league. We won the league. So maybe it's a little <laughs> omen. Yeah, it fell at the time, even though it was an early goal that went in. I felt like maybe it's come a little bit early because yeah. of the firepower we have. We knew we'd we'd have chance to get back into it. I think where Brighton do well for this goal is they beat the press. They're, they're, they're comfortable in possession of the ball. They'll take chances. They'll take risks. You can see with this one pass, the left back all of a sudden is on his bike and it beats three Liverpool players. Really good pass. You can see breaking breaking the pass there. And then Brighton can get on the counter-attack. That's what they're looking to do. Soak up the pressure and then try and counter-attack here, which to do. I think Liverpool do well, and, and Morgerel Kwanzaa, because he's been asked to play right side centre half, he is comfortable in those right back areas. He's saying, fine, I can deal with you. I'll delay you, which is what he does brilliantly. Delays, 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 and that allows Liverpool to get players back. Get a little bit fortunate, you have to say that Brighton there. It's a great finish from Danny Welbeck. It really is a good finish there. I think we have to give credit to Dominic Soberslai. Look at the ground he covers. Dominic Soberslai is getting back defensively, trying to stop the ball going in towards Danny Welbeck. In this position, you're thinking, well, there's the chance for Brighton. If they get the ball across to Welbeck, there may well be a shot for him there. But just watch how hard Soberslai has worked to get back there and just get a touch of ahead of Welbeck to stop him getting the shot initially. So we, we get the block there, and then all of a sudden there's a, a ricochet towards Van Dijk. He gets a block. So a little bit fortunate, you have to say that, the way it comes back to Danny Welbeck there, but it is a really good finish. So they beat the press there, they work it down the left-hand side. We do well defensively to delay. We do well to get back defensively with Soberslay in that position. But it's just this lucky ricochet. It's almost like a block initially from Van Dijk. That could go anywhere. It could go absolutely anywhere. Fortunately for Brighton, it falls kindly. You have to say that for, for Danny Welbeck. And it's a great finish. I mean, Keller has been in absolutely superb form. He really has. No chance. Absolutely no chance saving that one there. So, yeah, it was not an ideal start no. to, to concede so early on. But it was uh, a really good strike for the opener from Welbeck. Yeah, a hush descending on Anfield in the opening minutes. But thankfully, it did not last too long. Liverpool, of course, hit back in the 27th minute, levelling the scoring through Luis Diaz. He beats the offside trap here and he takes it very well as well. Good finish, absolutely. Yeah, it had been a good response from going behind. We'd had a few chances before that. It comes from a corner. Brighton weren't happy. They were appealing. It's a corner. Look at this. Here we go. You can see it's a good tackle. The, four, the ball runs out. It's a corner to Liverpool. I'm amazed at the setup from Brighton. I have to say that because everyone is is crowding towards the penalty area. But look at the space that Brighton leave on the edge of the box. There's no Brighton player there. You've got Salah there. You've got Connor Bradley there, and and they're in a position to get this second ball. Maybe get a shot themselves at goal if it falls nicely. So they pick up that second ball. I think we have to give Salah credit because he's in a challenge there. I don't think the Brighton lad does enough, but it's one of those challenges where you've got to be brave and really want to win the header, which I think Salah does well. So that's where he gets uh, the... Well, he doesn't even get the assist, does he? And the defender slices it into the path of, of uh, Luis Diaz. People were asking about the offside. Here we go. Here's the offside for you. Nowhere near offside. You can see as, as Salah makes the header there, there's a Brighton defender behind him. I think it's Van Heck, the centre-half, playing him on. But I like this finish. It's a clever finish from Luis Diaz. He's on the stretch, but he also knows he's got to lift it over the goalkeeper. Because if he just gets a little touch on it, the goalkeeper may well save it there. So that was really good from Diaz. Anticipation plays its part in this goal. Watch Diaz. He is the only player out of all the Liverpool players thinking, the defender might miss it. He might slice it. I might get on the end of this header from, from Mo Salah. And that's where he gets his reward. That's why he gets there ahead of the goalkeeper. He's anticipating that. There again, we're showing about him lifting it over the goalkeeper so he knows what he's doing in, the, in that position rather than just getting a touch he has to lift it over the goalkeeper final angle to show you it's just showing you he's on the stretch you know it's not an easy one to be able to generate that sort of precision to dink it over the goalkeeper on the stretch like that so well done Luis Diaz 
And, and that was a deserved equaliser for Liverpool. Yeah, Lewis Diaz levelling things up. And then from that point on, really, especially after the break, Liverpool were, were knocking on the door, weren't they? The winner, of course, came 20 minutes into the second half, right in front of the cart. Mo Salah finishing off what was a lovely, crisp team move that the boss, I know, really liked. L top goal. Top goal, absolutely. And really good play. And, uh, and what I like about this goal is, obviously, that it's the movement that Liverpool have. Nunes doesn't touch the ball but you have to give him credit for his movement because he's wanting to lengthen the game. He's, he's probably wanting the cross to come in from Sobers line. But what he does is he affects the back line of Brighton because Van Heck is thinking, I ain't going to let him get a free header at the back post. So he follows that run of Darwin Nunes. And what it does is it helps Mo Salah stay on side. The ball comes in, it's a brilliant pass. It's an absolutely brilliant pass from Alexis McAllister. Look at that offside line now. Because of Darwin Nunes, he's occupied two defenders. They're a little bit deeper than everybody else. And that's what allows Mo Salah to stay on side. Brilliant pass from McAllister, it really is. And a top finish from Salah, really good finish. How does it work out? Well, that's Sobers lie in the right back position with space because Connor Bradley is affecting the left back. So's Mo Salah. Salah's playing right wing. Connor Bradley's right back, but look how high they are. They are so high. And the left back's thinking, I've got to stay deep here. I cannot afford to try and get out towards Sobers lie there. So that's why Sobers lie gets the space he does in that right back position can take a touch, he can pick out the pass. It's a great pass, you have to say. But play between the lines. You can see Liverpool do it really well. Three players are between the lines because Brighton are worried about Salah. They're worried about uh, Nunes as well. And that's where Liverpool are clever. You can see getting in between the lines. Brilliant pass, isn't it, from, from McAllister. It really is to find Salah in that position. I love the touch from Salah because he'd missed a couple of chances before it. His confidence might have been a little bit down, but he's in that position again. His first touch is brilliant. It doesn't allow one defender to get there and make a, a challenge, a block, maybe the goalkeeper. Takes them all out of it with that first touch. Brilliant. And then just passes it into the corner. So there you go. Passes it into the space of the corner. Rather than trying to beat the goalkeeper on his near post, it really is a classy goal. And uh, yeah, Liverpool started the second half really well on top, but needing that goal because mm. it was 1-1 for a while and Salah provided it. Yeah, it was Mo Salah who got it. And Brighton probably tired of the sight of Mo Salah, I think. That was his 15th goal involvement against them in the Premier League. Uh, he's not scored and assisted more against any other opponent in the top flight. Yep, yep. Just one behind Steven Gerrard's involvement against Newcastle there. But you can see there, it was actually joint with Brighton, Newcastle and Manchester United before that game. Obviously, we don't play Newcastle again. We do play Manchester United again. Can he get a goal involvement <laughs> next week? We hope, hope he does. Maybe more than one. And he may go ahead of that one that he's got for Brighton. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Uh, yesterday's victory, of course, was as well. Liverpool's seventh, which I believe, from a losing position this season. That is more than any other side in the Premier League as well. It also we can show you here, means this season has seen Liverpool record their highest number of wins from behind in any Premier League campaign. It has not been good for our <laughs> nerve smells, but such a, a strong mentality about this team. Uh, absolutely. Actually, this list shows the top nine seasons in the Premier League where Liverpool have come from behind to win. So six of those nine have actually been under Jurgen Klopp. And this season, those seven games, Bournemouth at home, Newcastle away, Wolves away, Fulham at home, Palace away, Luton at home <laughs> and Brighton at home. There we go, there is the seven. I'm sure you remember all of those seven. But yeah, it's not ideal to be behind, but very impressive the mentality that they've had to come from behind and win so many games. Tell you what, he's done his homework this week, hasn't he? Thanks, Miles. That is it from us for now. Remember, though, you can subscribe to watch the full Premier League review show.